Hey Flower Tribe, it's Kelly Lehman and Lucy Lehman and today we're going to answer a lot of your sunflower questions. So I want to thank all of you who sent in your questions about sunflowers and today we're going to cover a lot of sunflower material. If we haven't met yet, it's nice to meet you. My name is Kelly Lehman. I'm the owner of Cranberry Fields Flower Farm here in Cranberry, New Jersey. And I love giving you fun, free flower tips each week. So please feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit the bell notification so you know whenever I post another fun, free garden tip video. So let's dive right in. So some of the questions that we received had to do with growing sunflowers in your own gardens. So the first question is, how do I plant sunflower seeds in my garden? So when you go to plant your sunflower seeds, you're gonna wait until there's no more chance of frost. Usually around springtime is a good time to plant here in New Jersey, we're a zone six uh, hardiness zone. And what I'll do is I'll wait till a little bit past Mother's Day to let the soil kind of warm up a bit. So you're gonna find a really sunny spot because sunflowers love the sun. And you're gonna make sure that your soil is well-drained soil. They don't like to get their legs too wet. They don't like to have the roots sitting in too much water. So you're gonna dig your soil about an inch or two. So I usually dig out about an inch or two, but take a look at what the back of your sunflower seeds say because each variety has its own planting instructions. And I'm basically gonna plant them about six inches apart. And it's a good idea to give your sunflowers a lot of space because then you don't have to worry about things like fungal issues and uh, kind of cramping each other too much. So about six inches apart is a good rule of thumb. And then you're just gonna simply bury it with some soil. Like I said, just about an inch or two. And then you're set, that's it, super easy. And you wanna make sure that you water in your sunflowers because once you water in your sunflowers, that's what's gonna start the whole process. So the sunflower seeds need to stay moist so that they can start to germinate. But after sunflowers are established, they usually only need about an inch or two of rain each week. And mother nature usually provides for that. So it's super easy to grow them. So another question that we had is, can I harvest my sunflower seeds to plant them the following year? And the answer to that is yes. And we're gonna take a walk out to the sunflower field right now and take a look at uh, how to harvest our sunflowers. So when you go to harvest your sunflower seeds, you wanna look for the back of the head kind of losing its green color and turning almost like this yellow. Sometimes they'll turn like a brown, like a tan, but they're no longer green. And you can tell the head is kind of droopy. It's kind of hanging low. And when I pick it up, I can tell that those flowers that are usually on the outside of a sunflower, the ray flowers are gone. And these flowers are called disc flowers. They're very easy to scrape off. So once the disc flowers are easy to scrape off and the ray flowers are gone and the head's droopy, I should start to see some really plump sunflower seeds underneath here. And there's tons of them. So this is a terrific sunflower to harvest. And here's how I'm gonna do that. I'm basically just gonna cut the stem. I'm gonna strip off the leaves and I'm gonna hang this guy upside down in either my garage or in my barn. I'm gonna make sure I find a cool, dry place to hang it. And then I'm gonna um, put it in either like an envelope or a cardboard box, or I'm gonna um, put it in like some glass jars and I'm gonna replant the seeds next year. Now I made a whole video showing you exactly how to harvest your sunflower seeds. So I'll put a link to that in descriptions below in case you're interested. But sunflower seeds are super easy to harvest like that. Now, um, one of the questions uh, that comes in a lot is can I harvest the sunflower seeds from sunflowers that I have in a vase or from an arrangement that somebody gave me or that I have you know sitting in my kitchen for my my garden and here's the story with that Actually, this arrangement is probably about two weeks old and it's on its last legs but I wanted to make sure that uh, the sunflower seeds weren't able to mature on this flower and I was pretty sure it wasn't because I'm pretty sure that it has to be part of the live plant to let those seeds really get mature so let's take a look at what happened this gal over here, I can easily take off those ray flowers. And these disc flowers here are still pretty tightly on it. But I do notice that there's some sunflower seeds in here. So I was interested, I was like, huh. But what I notice is that when I start to take them out, they're very soft. They're super soft. They don't look anything like the sunflowers that I just showed you on the other sunflower. They're super squishy. They're not yet mature. Actually, there's one darker sunflower seed in here out of all these squishy guys. So this is not a mature sunflower. Once again, I just wanna show you the difference in the floral heads. So these guys are super plump. They were super easy to kind of just pop out with my fingernail. You can see they're just popping out all over the place. And so 
very different than this one. So no, the answer is the sunflowers that are in your vase arrangements probably aren't uh, gonna give you the sunflower seeds that you want. They need to kind of ripen on the stem. And so I wanted to show you also the deer story. So the story with the deer is that they love to eat the sunflower sprouts when they're sprouts, when they're tiny, when they're only like an inch or two uh, tall off the ground because they're really sweet that way. A lot of times people will even put sunflower sprouts in their salads. And once the plant starts getting taller, a lot of times the deer will leave them alone because they're not quite as sweet anymore. So if you can protect those little seedlings uh, just for a couple weeks while they're still small, chances are the deer are gonna wind up leaving them alone later on. So here's what you could do. You could just take some bamboo poles, maybe about, I don't know, maybe about eight inches tall, put them all uh, surrounding your sunflower seeds. And then if you could just lay some chicken wire over the top of them and around the sides, I'm actually using a frame for my daughter's room, um, but this is kind of like, it has some chicken wire uh, that's like the base of it but the idea is to kind of wrap the chicken wire around the top and around the sides and then the deer can't get into it and then what you do is you basically just lift off the chicken wire and you get rid of the posts after the sprouts have gotten big enough so that's the idea behind that so thank you jill for letting me borrow your your chicken wire frame just to show this because i didn't have actual chicken wire available <laughs> Another question some of you have asked me is what do I do with my sunflower stems when my flowers are done blooming? What do I do with the plant in the garden? Do I rip it out? Do I leave it be? So here's what I do. I'll take some of the uh, sunflower stems that we have. Now this uh, complete bloom, was all the seeds were taken by the birds and that's okay. So I'll kind of just kind of clip that. But these stems are nice and dry now. And what I'll do is I'll clip them and I'm gonna use them as kindling wood in my fireplace. So they make for really great kindling. I kind of get rid of all the leaves. So these stems are a really good alternative to kindling wood. So I'll gather a whole bunch of these and I'll just leave them by my fireplace. And then I'm gonna have a ton of kindling wood for my fireplace. And sometimes I'll even take a whole bunch of bundled kindling wood I'll put a big burlap row, uh, bow around it and I'll give it with some sunflower seeds in a mason jar as part of like a gift. So it's just like a cute little thoughtful gift to add on. Sometimes it's super hard to remove these from the ground because sunflowers have a super long root system. So you could just kind of mow them down and that's not a big deal. And then eventually you could just like kind of replant around it and it should be fine. If you want to rip them out, you can. Um, we usually plow our fields over, but some of the sunflowers I have in my garden, like I said, I don't want to pull out my back, so don't sweat it. Another it question we had is if I harvest my sunflower seeds, will they give me the same exact variety of sunflower as I had in my garden last year? So here's what happens at Cranberry Fields. I grow a ton of different varieties of sunflowers. And what happens is the bees come in and they kind of go from flower to flower and there's a lot of cross pollination that goes on. And so what happens is the following year, my sunflowers kind of take on the characteristics of each other. So you're gonna see lots of blends. Oh, Lucy's kind of had it. She's done, she's going in for her nap. See you later, Lucy. Take 10. So sunflowers will take on different characteristics of each other the following year. So I might have some that were branching one year and some that were single flower, some that were more maroon and some that were yellow and they all kind of blend uh, in future years. And it's really cool to see what comes up in the field uh, in following years. A lot of you have also asked me, do sunflowers track the sun? So a lot of people know, you might remember this from like being in school, uh, heliotropism. And that basically means that the sun, the, the sunflower's heads basically follow the sun. So when the sun rises in the east, the sunflower heads face east and throughout the course of the day, they pretty much track the sun and a lot of the heads will wind up facing west by the end of the day. And then they kind of reset themselves overnight and they'll face east again. But here's the thing, they usually only do this when they're uh, younger, when they're smaller and some of the smaller, daintier flower heads are more known to do this. So the big giant mammoth ones, once they're full blown, they usually don't track the sun quite as much because the flower heads are so heavy. Some of you have asked me, do I have to stake my sunflower plants? And uh, my answer to that is you don't always have to, I don't. So we have tons and tons and tons of sunflowers in our field. I don't get a ton of wind back here uh, unless we have like a major storm. So usually the sunflower stems are pretty sturdy and they basically support themselves. But every now and then you might get a bloom in your garden that starts to droop and you might want to support it. So this is a really super easy way 
to kind of support your plant, you're gonna just put in a wooden dowel or a bamboo post, just kind of put it right next to the plant. I just kind of hammer this into the ground, you know, just a couple inches. And I'm just kind of gonna take some string or twine and I'm just gonna attach it very loosely to the dowel. And I'm gonna do this loose so that the plant can continue to grow. If it's not full, uh, mat if it's not fully mature yet, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you don't have it tied too tightly. So I'm just gonna do a little knot here and that should do the trick. Sometimes people will also take a few sunflowers that they have uh, that are together and they'll tie them together. So they'll take this stem and kind of put it here, but you wanna make sure that you don't keep these plants too close together. Otherwise you're gonna wind up getting some mildew issues because of the leaves getting too wet and being too close. So if you're gonna use your sunflowers to support each other, make sure that they have enough space to grow and enough space that they don't get those mildew issues from being too close. So now these guys, are gonna support each other. I've seen this done with gladiolus too, and it's really kind of a, a fun tip. Um, you, you hardly even see the string inside of it, and it just kind of gives that extra added support. You can also consider planting them uh, against like, like a fence or a garden structure to kind of give it that support also, and maybe tie some loose twine around that, and then that will also add the extra support. But for the most part, I don't stake my sunflowers. Another common question that I get is why do my sunflower leaves have lots of brown spots on them and why are some of the leaves turning yellow and dropping to the ground? So this may be an indication that the sunflower has too much moisture and it may have like a fungal problem. So what happens is sometimes uh, gardeners will overhead water their plants and then it gets cooler at night and then sometimes you wind up getting a fungus on the leaves that can affect the plant. So um, if this is the case, uh, try not to overhead water your plants. You should always try to water plants at the base in general. That's a good rule of thumb. But sometimes Mother Nature winds up giving us a rainstorm uh, like right before it turns dark and then you know there's nothing you can do to avoid that. So for the most part when this happens to my sunflowers they're usually okay. They usually grow anyway but um, if you're really concerned about it there are all sorts of products that, uh, like Home Depot and Lowe's and your garden center stores that have uh, like a fungicide that you can kind of get rid of that or help them. So but for the most part I try not to apply too many chemicals to my flowers and they usually grow anyway so don't panic it should be fine. Some of you have asked, can I grow sunflowers in pots? And the answer is yes, but keep in mind that sunflowers have a really long root system. So you're gonna to wanna to find some of the varieties of sunflowers that are like the dwarf varieties that are a little bit shorter and their root systems will be a little bit shorter also. And make sure that your flower pot has great drainage because you wanna make sure that those roots don't sit in too much water and um, you should be good to go. Just make sure you put them in a sunny spot. So thank you so much for joining Lucy and I in this video. And let me know where you're viewing this from in this great, big, beautiful world. I love to see how our flower tribe is growing around the globe each week. And if you have any questions or flower tips, please put them in comments below. I love when our flower tribe learns great tips from each other. And also feel free to jump on over to our Cranberry Fields Instagram and say hi over there. And know that I made a free PDF file for you as a free gift to let you know about four of my all-time favorite garden flowers to grow in your own gardens and you can check that out and grab it in the descriptions below and I'll also put a link to my patreon page in case you're interested in becoming a flower tribe supporter and I will see you in the next video